He-Man Masters of the Universe. He-Man Masters of the Universe. Castle Grayskull, I have the power. The Masters of the Universe and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they have been doing a collectible crossover. A nice combination of He-Man characters and Ninja Turtles characters in the world of Eternia. I actually already have a few figures myself. Mattel was kind enough to send me this Leonardo and this Krang. And then with my own cash money, I bought Donatello and I found this mouse jaw at Target, had to get him with more to come. But Mattel just sent me over their fall 2024 catalog. I know these images have been out there for a little bit, but they sent it to me directly so I can share it with you, especially the Turtles of Grey Skull stuff because I'm very excited. More Ninja Turtles characters are crossing over with the world of He-Man and Masters of the Universe. It's an 80s dream come true. Out the gate with the awesome. This freaking Michelangelo, but he's got like the battle armor He-Man outfit. If you don't remember, there was a battle armor He-Man where if you hit the middle of it, you turned it, it would look like he had battle damage. I don't know if this figure is gonna do that, but either way, it's a great figure. He does have the Prince Adam flowing hair as well. That is great. A lot of times they're using their shells as shields in this, but he's got his nunchuck still. It looks like you can have the hair off if you want to, but I'm keeping that hair on. There's no way I'm gonna have this Michelangelo figure and not have that hair on him like that. That is amazing. We got Merman up in the house. This Merman is really cool. And what I like about this Merman is because some of the characters are mutated in the Master Universe world. So Merman has always been a Merman. Now he's literally a Merman. <laughs> where he actually has like a tail and a fin. I thought that was a really cool idea. So now you can have him with his usual legs that he usually has, or you can actually have him be full on merman with this. That is really nice. Of course, I love that trident. I also really like this like neon fluorescent glow they got going on with him. Like you can almost see through. He's giving me very like 2000s tech <laughs> where everything was see through. He looks like an old iMac. That's what he looks like. But yeah, man, that's a very cool design for Merman. I really like that look. And I just, again, I love the fact that you can have him classic style with the legs, or if you actually want to give him Fins. That's a really cool idea to do with Merman. I think they did a really good job with that. That's a cool figure. I want that figure. I like that one. Shredator! <laughs> Picture just calling him Core Skeletor. So how does a Shredder Skeletor sound? Because Skeletor is nah, but Shredder is like turtles. So it's like <laughs> I'll get you, He-Man and Turtles. <laughs> This is why I'm not a voice actor, everyone. <laughs> Definitely getting Skeletor in the face, but then with all that green, he's kind of giving me Scare Glow vibes a little bit too. And he's got a little canister of ooze there. Oh yeah, dude, that's nice. That's a nice Skeletor. April O'Neil, but like the Sorceress? Oh, come on. That is so cool. I love that. April O Sorceress, Sorceress O'Neil. That is really awesome with the wings and everything. That is very, very cool. I love that April O'Neil figure. I love those wings. Love that weapon that she's got. Yeah. Yeah, Channel 6 will never be the same. <laughs> we got Hordak, but it looks like he's getting some bat wings there. So is he becoming Horde Bat, <laughs> I guess? Uh, some of the He-Man characters, they're getting like mutated as a part of the turtles being there. The ooze is getting around. So I think that might be what's going on with Hordak here. We got a Tila figure. Tila figure is kind of like the man in arms figure where they're pretty much the same character. They're not mutated or anything, but just their armor is very shell based. So man at arms had that with his figure that's already out. And it looks like they're doing the same with Tila. Well, I'm being really honest, while I like all the figures, these are probably my least favorite of the figures just because I feel like it's just putting shells on regular characters as opposed to like doing something different with them. I love the like mix that they're doing where they're clearly referencing characters with their mix. I do like the turtle armor. It is neat. This is still a nice figure. This is a nice Tila figure. I do like that shell shield. I do like that weapon. I like that you can wear it on your back as well as hold it. So you got your options there. So it's nice. Here we got a Casey Jones figure. He looks like he's doing a little bit of a normal thing as well, but he's getting, you know, Eternia weaponry there, which I'm sure is good for him. He always loves his sporting equipment. So now we're gonna see what he does with Eternia sporting equipment, I guess. <laughs> what are the sports in Eternia? What are the Master of the Universe sports? But I like that they gave him that kind of Master of the Universe build. I really like the face on him. It's a very like cartoon face. It almost gives me 2003. Ninja Turtle vibes with his face there. Not exactly, but like that's the energy I get from it. 
So really good job with that. You know, he usually has like the hockey mask or something like that. He's kind of got like the, is that like Grand Man almost? Or just, he's got like a very Eternia warrior mask there. So this one is very neat. It's very much Casey Jones, but it is like if Casey Jones went to Eternia. A little bit more creative than just a, let's put shell stuff on him like they did with Man at Arms and Tila. I like some of the stuff that they did with him to make it seem like he is really adopting himself into the Master of the Universe world. This dude, this is just... This is just, first off, a buff splinter just seems awesome to me. Like, <laughs> I just don't know what it is about a buff splinter that is making me go like, all right, daddy splinter here. <laughs> I think he's supposed to be King Grayskull. Is that the deal here? Oh my gosh. Oh, look at those arms, boy. And I love the hair on the side there. That's really cool. But yeah, I think he's supposed to be like a King Grayskull type. King Grayskull, of course, like part of the lore, the legend of Castle Grayskull. I think that's what he's going with there. Love that cape. I love that sword. Oh yeah, man, this is good. Yeah, man, Mattel is going all out. Like, see, this is what I like. This is what I like when you make those nice combinations of the Ninja Turtles character and the He-Man character, mixing them together. Obviously there's a whole storyline that goes on with this because they actually have comic books that they put inside with the figures. I would love them to do an animated special or film or something with this. Please someone animate this. This Splinter is very cool. Like the turtles will not talk back to this sensei. I tell you what, we got this stealth Leonardo figure here. Of course, like I already showed you, we have the Leonardo figure where he's kind of like He-Man. So now we got this stealth figure. That's really cool. Also looks like we're getting like a stealth He-Man figure as well. I freaking love this leather head. The, the thing that's crazy about leather head, particularly this leather head, he looks like he would be a Master of the Universe character. Think about it. An alligator creature named Leatherhead. If you put that character in a standard Master of the Universe packaging, would you tell the difference? <laughs> I guarantee you by gumbo. <laughs> that's a good looking leather head, by the way. That's a different looking leather head than what we usually see, so I like that a lot. This is just genius. This is freaking genius. So for those that don't know, <laughs> there is a character in Master of the Universe called Too Bad, which is literally a guy that has two heads. In the cartoon, of course, they will always bicker with each other and everything, so it makes perfect sense that they will make a Too Bad version of Bebop and Rocksteady. I think it's called Too Bop Steady or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I love the figure. I love the look. I love their heads. I love the way they have the body nicely split between the Bebop side and the Rock City side. The weapons look cool. This is a definite. Please, can we now turn this into like just a 60 minute animated special because I need this to exist as a cartoon. I need to see Rock City and Bebop <laughs> argue with each other attached to the same body. Don't worry, we'll get those two idols. Yeah, we'll get them. And they just bump into each other somehow because they keep trying to go different directions. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> They're your mutant shredder. They're always my mutants when they mess up Krang. <laughs> oh, when they always mess up shredder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grown man. Uh, so <laughs> I just love that this exists. I love the fact that two franchises I remember growing up with and still loving are now merging together like this. Something I never thought would ever happen. Other random things they're doing with the He-Man line, they're coming out with this Skeletor throne, which that, Looks really cool. Skeletor on top of his throne. I, I, I might need this. I might need this in my life. I gotta give a shout out to this new line of collectibles that they've been making recently called the Cartoon Collection. They are collectible toys that look like the Filmation He-Man cartoon. And I think that's awesome. Some have already been out. Like they have a He-Man already out. They have a Skeletor already out. But now they're showing some new figures that are coming out. So for example, we got Cartoon Evil Lynn here. That's so awesome. Evil Lynn, right hand is Skeletor. That's a cool figure. We got Web Store in the house, yeah. You got Clawful, you got Spikor, but this is my absolute favorite. This Prince Adam and Cringor 2-pack. <laughs> so Prince Adam figure actually means a lot to me because Prince Adam was the figure that I had for a long time before I ever got a He-Man figure. It was weird because I had Castle Grayskull. I got that for like either my birthday or for Christmas. But for some reason, trying to convince my parents to buy a bunch of He-Man figures was tough. They're not you know, food or rent. So so whenever He-Man figures went down on discount, that's usually when I could convince them to get me one from like Kmart or Toys R Us or whatever. So Prince Adam went on discount. So Prince Adam is who I got for a long time. That's who I had. I had to pretend that he was turning into He-Man, but just still in Prince Adam outfits. So when I saw this figure, I was so excited. I was like, okay, you know what? I appreciate that y'all are giving me a Prince Adam figure, particularly a cartoon one. 
and also adding cartoon cringer with him that's great to see a cringer figure that really takes me back to the old filmation cartoon days so i really appreciate that Ooh, i don't want to change he man and i guess it's a rule now that if you are a product of the 80s and you're still around you have to do a collaboration with stranger things <laughs> ninja turtles have done it light bright has done it and now he man apparently is doing it a stranger things collaboration i think that's vecna but like now as a master of the universe type character so there you go what song will he man listen to <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Andy praise. Let me know what some of your favorite figures are that I showed off, whether it's the Turtles of Grayskull figures or the Cartoon Collection figures. And there's some other figures that are releasing as well. If you want to check out Master of the Universe entire fall catalog, check it out at Mattel's socials. They probably have that up. There's probably some other YouTube creators who cover all toys that probably have talked about this. So check those out. I just had to, of course, emphasize the Ninja Turtle stuff and the cartoon stuff, because that, of course, hits my personal nostalgic heart. Thank you so much. You have the power. <laughs> and now I feel like I'm supposed to give some message at the end about like fire safety or something. <laughs> Don't touch a, a electric wire if you see it on the ground. <laughs> he man. <laughs>